cough. gonna drink this maybe i'll just ugh that's terrible that's that's delicious fuel up mm, nummy 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 good morning everybody uh it's gonna oh, suck nummy. a little bit today because uh, i just got off the uh the horn with um don uh vicky is sick and it looks like he's coming down with whatever it is so he's zinking up with vitamin c and hopefully he's going to be better uh so we're not going to have that vietnam veteran perspective i was i was really hoping for this morning with the show so but good morning everybody happy monday uh, where'd joe go oh we lost him we well, lost internet, joe internet has been janky well that's it the show's over <laughs> There he is. He's back. <laughs> uh, for some reason, after the intro, I couldn't hear anybody. Oh, huh. no. Uh, <laughs> well, so you know what I said? Is Joe's not here. What's well, it? Show's over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad you, uh, I'm glad you feel I'm that important, sir. Thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why not? All right. <laughs> Good to see you guys, man. Good to see you, Joe. Good to see you, John. Good morning, Martin. I love it. Martin calls Good me morning. and says, hey, boss, we're like nine minutes away. And I'm like, I had to stop getting dressed to answer the phone. What? I had to stop. I can't hear anything you say. Oh, man. Intense. I just started laughing going, I'm getting dressed. I had one of those moments this morning I because I, I talked to um, Don uh, first time, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm awake. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, shit, what time is it now? <laughs> yeah. Because I stayed up too late last night uh, trying to get some of this stuff done, uh, getting a slideshow for today done. And, um, man, it really uh, uh, makes it hard to wake up in the morning. <laughs> Just a little. See that? Uh, no, it's not Animal Mother that does it, Pat. Um, that's Joker. Yeah, I was gonna say it's Joker that does. That. After you eat the peanuts out of my shit, um, is the line. You talk to talk. Do you walk the walk? Um, yeah, you're talking about one of my favorite Vietnam War films. Uh, yeah, but. Good morning to all you guys. I don't know who's all here. Who's all here? Let's ch take a look. We got Andrew, Andy Morrow's here from the UK. Penny is here. Uh, Dragon Roos is here. Socks Bulletin and Monkey Jeeps. And of course, Pat S. is here. Uh, so it's good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a, a good start to the week. Oh, man. Shay's, Shay's here, too. Oh, Shay here? Shay, yeah. what's up, brother? Hey. Um... Man, I can't remember, Che, what years were you in? Uh, just put it in the chat. Um, this is a show that, of course, celebrates uh, the military, military veterans. I don't celebrate the um, the Department of Defense because uh, I think they're chock full of assholes. But I celebrate uh, all those who served and uh, all my fellow veterans especially those combat veterans out there. Um, and I want to watch have a drink to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Once I'm up, man, I'm drinking it. 
Of course I hey, am, Trey. Kingsport in the house. Uh, Kingsport Cows here. Good morning. Oh, that's okay, man. Don't worry about it if you don't like him. Uh, I always do that separation of, uh, you know. Art and the from, artist. Yeah, art and the artist. Um, I think that um, one thing I like about him is he was one of the few actors making sure American Indians got work. And he really did. He would help their communities when he would shoot on location, making sure that uh, as many able-bodied people could be able to work. John Ford did the same thing, but it doesn't mean they're not racist. It just means that they were trying to help the, the American Indian communities that they worked with. Uh, in England, I have no doubts it's miserable over there. I, I'm going to tell you, uh, as many times as I was in the UK, oh, uh, man. I went to see the um, Cliffs of Dover probably about a dozen times. And not every, not, not any time did I ever get to see the actual cliffs because the shitty weather. You can never see them. <laughs> I'm it's like, a pity Don is not here so he cannot read this sweet comment from Mokichi. <laughs> yeah, no Korean war <laughs> Right? <laughs> Let me say, fuck you, monkey Jeebus. That thing with that Man Martigan did with Korean War is like his his own version of the back door. <laughs> yeah. So, but again, it was uh, Joker Pat that said that, not uh, not, not animal not mother. Animal mother. Yeah. Uh, so, good morning, everybody. And did did Che answer my question yet? Yeah. Because I don't see there it is. 2000 to 2003, active duty, and 2005 through 08 in the reserves. It's amazing how many of us did that. We, just, we did regular. Well, reserves. so many of us go, yeah, your, your first year active duty, then you go into reserves and or National Guard, and, uh, and then you get bored and tired of the shit. Um, I, and, did, I did it so I could go to uh, school in Louisiana State School for free. Yeah, uh, I loved yeah. I loved having my GI Bill, man. Yeah. Mm. Now, even though they don't pay up front. No, 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 no. The Na National Guard, it's waived if you go to a Louisiana State school. Oh, I if like the that. National Guard, yeah, it's waived. I like All you got to do is pay for books. And I made the mistake. because That's why I, I joined was... the Guard after three years of regular service. Right. Yeah. Um, I started in the National Guard and then um, switched over to a reserve unit. Hmm. So I, Because I really like that unit. And that's where I made all my friends. Um, and my two sergeants were uh, Sergeant uh, Eugene Tevez and Sergeant First Class Tom Parker, two of the greatest guys. They're still friends of mine. I love those guys. I, I, get them. I got sure to get them on the show. You sure he wasn't a colonel? There's a colonel of truth in that. There's a colonel of truth in that. Look out. Yeah. Look out. So, yeah, well, my I problem. There was a. Uh... There was there was a college fund program where that you put in a dollar, they matched a dollar, and you got a bonus for how many years you did. Oh I yeah, had, I've seen programs I had $40, like that. $40,000. We didn't have that fund. when I got to California, man. Mm -hmm. um, my unit was uh, the 308th Med Ambulance out in California, part of the Sixth Army. Mm -hmm. uh, we were stationed. Uh, we had our own. It was like a little strip mall. I mean, that's all it really was. It was a strip yeah. mall yeah. built on the post on, on the Air Force Base, McClellan Air Force Base. Uh, at one of the gates, right when you went through the gate, boom, it, you went by a strip mall. Now, on one side of the strip mall was us, and on the other half of the strip mall, the north side, mm -hmm. was uh, the 308. Uh, we were the 308th, and, and the 321st MASH was in the other part of the building. Okay. And we FTX together. And we always called them the 320 worst. And um, <laughs> I remember during FTX, I was m one of my jobs was doing triage uh, as a medic. We'd bring people in, and then I would, I would establish who was in the worst shape and who would go first. Mm -hmm. And when, one of the doctors came out, and I just looked up at it, and I said, "Hey, man, if we get hit during this training, just triage me out. Let me die. Don't, don't yeah. work on me." And he looked at me and goes, "I said, yeah, I really don't think you guys are very good." <laughs> <Rather> <laughs> <die>. <laughs> Did you say McClellan Air Force Base? Yeah. That, that, that's funny as hell because I went to basic training at Fort McClellan, Alabama in Anniston. 
Holy shit. No, no kidding. Yeah. Uh, apparently there's more than one base named McClellan. Yeah. Uh, of course, the one I went to, it, it's closed now. Matter of fact, I've heard that I could be part of a class action lawsuit if I wanted to, because they also trained the uh, NBC guys there, and apparently they let some chemicals seep into the groundwater. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But I, I don't take part in those things. I don't have illnesses from that. So. Yeah, I am so, I'm very anti litigious. Yeah. Uh, I've had opportunities to sue people over actual injuries and I just like, nah, fuck. Nah. I'm just gonna I'm gonna die one day. Look, if you got disability stuff coming to you, go for it. Well that's you, just it. And to I told you I, tense, but. I talked to a lawyer uh, about two weeks back and I really got angry during the phone call because they're like, uh, have you held a regular job in the last five years? And I'm like, No, I'm a freelance. What are you talking about? Well, if you haven't held a job in the last five years and not paid into your disability, I said, well, for the last five years, I've been mostly unemployed, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I don't make enough to have to pay my taxes. Well, then you can't file for disability. And I'm like, I work for 44 years paying into my disability. Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> I, I got really angry at that. It wasn't even a lawyer. It was a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, legal um uh, what are they it works for the lawyer legal yeah. legal yeah. aid whatever i got really angry at him and uh i said i don't need your representation in fuck you right um anima confisa is here I yay hey of my life kind of she's a swirling circle <laughs> hey man One there she is there she One is one serves the entire family serves how you doing anima I am and not. I'm going to tell you the truth. Either being, scribe. She's no. either trolling us, being, being frozen, or uh, I don't know what's going on there. Um. Good morning. Can you hear us at all? No, I don't think she can hear us. Uh, no. Side question from Scribe Light: Have you guys reviewed Casualties of War previously? I got to uh, be honest. I'm probably not going to. Never. Even though my boss is my boss is in that movie. And he's the senior military advisor for that film. And I don't like that movie. I don't like Sean Penn. I it's have, a seriously anti- uh, It's very anti-American. It's very yeah. anti-soldier. Um, Brian De Palma is a communist piece of shit. I don't like him. His, you know, they'd already covered that story enough in Platoon. But, oh, no, Brian De Palma is this kind of guy that all he wants to do is disparage soldiers. If he's not shitting on American soldiers, he's not happy. He did that stupid movie, Redacted. I'm so glad he, he lost money. I hurt his career. I'm glad it hurt his career. I haven't seen it. Now, I'll turn right around and go, thank God for Brian De Palma, because if not for him, we wouldn't have got the Star Wars that we got. Really? Yeah, uh, he, it was a lot of his ideas uh, after watching the first cut of it that led to what we got. Hmm. And um, the, the two people who I think had the greatest impact, well, there are three people um, other than George Lucas. Uh, Spielberg actually didn't have that much of an influence on him on that one. But um, Brian De Palma, uh, Alicia Lucas... And the other editor, I forgot his name right now. And I would think his wife had the most influence. His wife had the most. Mm -hmm. I love Carlito's Way. Yeah. You know? No, look, wrong. there are he's movies he did. And I, and I told you before, I separate the art from the artist. Yeah. He's a um, there are guy. movies I he has I do like, but I won't watch his military movies. Yeah. Because the they're very anti the best movies you'll ever see. But, uh, yeah. Full of shit. Absolutely nothing. Like no. what happened? No, but it's a damn but good it's a movie. Great movie, yeah. Um, Marsha Lucas, yeah, man, she was something else. Of course, you know we all know she cheated on George. Uh, but <laughs> you know, I like the Untouchables because it got Sean Connery his his bald guy. Yeah. It also got him his <laughs> his first Oscar. <laughs> That's what Scribe says. No, you're welcome, Scribe. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, um, Dale Dye nails it in the movie. 
And Dell Dye kept, I'm sorry, got one hair driving me crazy. It's hanging in front of my face. Uh, Dell Dye kept casualties of war from being even worse. And he did an amazing job. Uh, Michael J. Fox, good performance. Yeah. You know, but I'm I'm pissed at, at De Palma for constantly wanting to do this. He's he, he's one of those people that you can have a thousand things to talk about that are wonderful, amazing, hero, heroism, just amazing stuff from American soldiers. And he's got to gotta put a magnifying one glass. Fucking on one story, thing. and he just focuses in on that one story and paints this broad stroke of what the you know U.S. soldier is, and I despise him for that. Uh, and Scribe, you're very welcome. That's my review of that movie. Uh, I wouldn't mind going into it because, uh, Scribe, if I do it, you have to be on the show. But I'm not going to do it on Military Monday because this, this show is about honoring men and women. My uh, my birthplace, I'm, I'm reading that uh, comment down there. My birthplace is getting its name changed. Fort Polk is going to become Fort Johnson by the end of the year. Oh, so now it's all about a penis? Apparently so. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yep. That's, that's, that's one of the nicknames for a penis, honey. Yeah. Okay, good Johnson. To know. I'm, I'm sorry I can't be part of, of this because Wi Fi RT sucks. I'm still at my dad's and I haven't seen the movie, but I just thought I'd pop in through the back door and say hi and tell everybody I arrived oh. and things are good and I saw my new apartment. Oh, she came I, in. Just I just came breach. back from, yeah, I just came back from seeing my new apartment for the first time. We brought some supplies there. It's great. I'm looking forward to furnishing it and being there. And hopefully well, I can figure out Wi-Fi words, tomorrow. For that, for that breach, you're going to get the Czechoslovakian <laughs> breakup. I break with okay. thee, I break with thee, and then I throw dog poop on your shoes. Bye. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm so scared. Nice Steve Martin reference there, buddy. That's all. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that is Steve Martin from uh, Saturday Night Live when he and Dan Aykroyd were two... Too wild and crazy guys. <laughs> we are from Czechoslovakia to single we men looking pants. for girls. <laughs> See our bojes. Yes. <laughs> and there we go. What was it? Uh, uh, in Czechoslovakia, when you break with a woman, you say, I break with thee, I break with thee, I break with thee. And then you throw dog poop on your shoes. And then when you're a single guy, you go walking around looking for girls with dog poop on their on shoes. The shoes. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I thought only monkeys do with poop. Apparently Sasquatches do that too. Apparently Czechoslovakians. <laughs> Ouch. The Czech Republic. Um, okay. So, but anyway, um, Fort Benny is getting, yeah, Fort Moore yeah. on May 11th on well, our general. And I'm now, I post. can get behind that. I'm glad what? you made it okay to Vienna and, and uh, that. Uh, it was a you nice road trip already. with my youngest brother, and the cats were surprisingly chill. So it was. It yeah, was the good. cats drove while. Uh, happened really is cool. So, yeah. While Flo <laughs> stuck his head out the window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're changing poke. You met Flo. You don't Ray get to shit just... on him. Oh, I just did, though. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him <laughs> Gary officially shit on him for the first time. Sorry, Joe. It's okay. We'll do. We'll do. Uh, they're changing. They're changing Pope because Leonidas Pope was a uh, uh, rebel colonel. Yeah. See, now I have a problem with that because it doesn't matter. He was still an American general. Hello? He started out as American. They're still Americans, and that, this is my problem with the woke culture. Yeah. They, they want to dismiss them as still having served. Robert E. Lee. Um, still went to, um, what do you call it? Um, West Point. West Point. He was a graduate of West Point. Uh, he was also inducted back into the U.S. military after um, the Civil War was ended. I was fixing to say, yeah, it, it all they all merged back into the same army. They were all part of the same army to start with. Yeah, the whole he, thing was they were trying to break from the country, and Lincoln was stopping them. Yes, and so they were brought back in, and then you get these modern fucking minds that just um, weren't there making these big decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, it, you know, look, I, I don't like red, uh, certain kinds of rednecks. I love some rednecks. Uh, I have a lot of friends who are rednecks. 
And uh, but there's of course because good old boys are fun. What I don't mm-hmm. like are just racists. And stop yes. putting an entire culture as racist. Like right. the entire South owned slaves somehow. They didn't. It was a very small percentage of people in the South. They were that very owned rich slaves. people that did that. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most people were, were poor and did a lot of the jobs that if the slaves weren't doing it, they did it. Um, and did know. a lot of the dying when the war started. Yep. Yeah. They were conscripted into the military, forced into the military. Okay, guys, I need to hop out again. I'll see you later. All righty, hon. See you later. Thank you for popping in. Bye, Bye, Bye. Bye-bye. I'm going to get some coffee, gentlemen. Be right back. Look, this is It could happen. It could happen. Look, I don't put anything past them. Uh, Fort Bennington is being renamed after Julian Moore from Boogie Nights. <laughs> that Julianne. <laughs> and by the way, when I do get a chance to talk to you, and I will talk to you this week, John, um, I, I'd like it if you're able to step in as our t- talent oh, co- you know, coordinator, that you would coordinate all guests for the show. Uh, and that's what okay. I'll talk to you about. Guys, I have... I'm having intermittent disconnections, so maybe we have, may we may have a little problem with the slideshow for today. <laughs> if um, I get disconnected, just remember yeah, where and... you left off, and it's a lot shorter today. I figured some shit out, so um, let me go ahead and get this thing going here. We're twenty minutes in. Um. Uh. I remember the first time I, I saw the word. And I'm like, barrettes? <laughs> they didn't know what a beret was. Huh. I was like, I don't know. I think the first time I saw this, I was, I was four or five. Jim Hutton. Uh, you know the show Leverage, right? His son, Timothy Hutton, was the star of yeah. that. Aldo Ray. George Takei is in this, by the way. That's obviously not the same Richard Pryor. <laughs> no. And of course, Robin Moore's book is much better than the film. So this Richard Pryor was prior to our Richard Pryor. No, Richard Pryor mm-hmm. was out in the, earlier than this. Because this was, what, 68? Yeah, something like that. Uh, no. The book was written earlier than that. And here we see them on uh, parade here in front of the press. And um, let's see, Hal Moore. I mean, Hal Moore, Robin. Uh, let's see, Robin Moore. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, the adaptation was 68, but the book was 65. And the story okay. takes place in 65. Uh, this is early on before escalation. Uh, the primary function of the uh, special forces was to go in as advisors for the South Vietnamese. And almost right off the, the, the cuff, we were fighting battles with and and then for these guys. I completely forgot the fugitive was the reporter that was with them, right? David Jansen. Now, David Jansen is actually an American veteran. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the only few veteran, non-veteran people in the film is John Wayne. John Wayne never served. He was 4F, as they call. Mm-hmm. Um, first, he was 4F and then classified as uh, the sole bread earner for his family. And what they're doing here is a press junket where they show what the Green Berets do. And one of the primary things I tell people, one of the things about the Green Berets is they're really as, as good at combat as they are trained to be. They're primarily emissaries. Their, their function is to embed themselves with uh, regional people, the culture. They're, you know, they speak multiple languages. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing you point out here. They, they're speaking Norwegian and German during this meeting because they trained along with a lot of those people. And, but they learn foreign languages. And the military, this is the funny thing about the military, is they train based off of the previous war. And that's the though, preacher. That's the preacher from They Live. 
Yes, they live. That's yeah. right. Oh my gosh. The blind guy. Uh, um, <clears throat> Aldo Ray. Love that guy. There's another dude. You'll see him in a lot of John Wayne movies. John Wayne used a lot of the same actors. He had his own crew that he'd work with. Uh, Robert Mitchum's son was in a lot of stuff and uh, pissed off John Wayne when he, he went, uh, he because he was a liberal, and he got in an argument on set and never worked with him again. It's sad. You know, John Wayne was just, I think he was kind of an asshole, you know, because once you stepped over that line with him, he would just fucking cut you off. I don't know. Uh, I would like to know more about that, Reed. And by the way, good morning, man. How are you doing? Um, but um, I still, there's a love for, for John Wayne because he really was a, a uh, he, he bled red, white, and blue. And yeah, he did. Defended the, there's a guy that played a lot of villains right there. I mean, didn't uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, but didn't he make this movie to support the war effort? Really, it's he it's was trying to kind support of a the war effort. Propaganda piece, isn't it? It is very propaganda. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of military guys, were pissed at him though for making this movie the way he did by throwing himself into the middle of it, making a John Wayne movie instead of adapting the book and just directing and producing it. Right. And his character in the movie is not in the book. He's completely made up just so he could be the centerpiece of the film, and it pissed a lot of people off. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't piss off Robin Moore. Uh, I've never seen anything said by him, but the whole thing was to uh, put a you know show a, a light of respect towards American servicemen and women, mostly men. Um, there are very few women in the military at this time, but. So far, yeah, Reed. Uh, I'm worried about Don. Um, he's getting sick right now. Vicky is sick, so I'm hoping that they're feeling better. I was, I didn't get enough time to talk to him this morning, uh, but I sure hope they're feeling better. Barracks life, man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. My God, the smells. Yes. Ooh, little, scratch and sniff, smells man. Women could not handle. Let me tell you. How what? many times have you just like walked in? And smelled something going, oh, God damn it. You just wish Dude. you weren't there. It's like, Dude. who ate Thai? Who ate Indian right. tonight, you what motherfuckers? What's wrong with you? Like farting. Oh, my God, the farts. <laughs> the barracks. Oh, my God. I'm glad as a junior leader I would get my own private room. I love the C-130. Look at that. Mm. If you're one of those people that needs a lot of personal space, do not join the military. Mm -hmm. They stack us on top of each other like cordwood. <laughs> I was explaining to Animal one day. I said, uh, here's how it works with vehicles in the military. There's no such thing as a passenger in the military. You're either uh, the pilot driver or you are co-pilot driver one, co-pilot driver two, co on infinitum, or your cargo. That means that if you, as the pilot or driver, get in trouble, every single person with you that's considered a co-driver pilot gets in trouble with you. Yep. And the only people safe are the people that are cargo. The people in the back of the cattle car. Back in the, yeah, back of the cattle car. <laughs> uh, like I drove an ambulance and I was an ambulance commander uh, and me and my co driver because there's two of us in the front everybody in the back was cargo yeah. and, uh, and that's just the way it worked in the military the mps we served uh eight weeks of basic training and then eight weeks of ait most people and gary will back me up on this most people when they go to ait they end up in like three or four man bungalows you know they're they're nine to depending five depending on where you're you're at right? like we had we had bays the military and police stayed in that same bay with those same 60 dudes because they said if you're going to police the military you're going to have you're going to be better than all of them and they kept us basically in basic training conditions for 16 weeks all the way through ait now by yep. the way they are no longer in the united states right now they're already over no. there mm -hmm. and that was another thing i had a problem with is the way they made that where they shot uh, and I'm not sure the shooting location, but it, it did not look like Vietnam. Uh, 
some of it kind of does um like when they're at that um uh, tarmac there's a couple of shots showing the ocean where it does but i remember everybody making fun of the end of the film because uh where they're at is facing west or east so they're showing the sunset at the end of the movie and they're 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 facing east and so you wouldn't see the sunset over the ocean you you would see it over the the tarmac (laughs) yeah so it was setting on the wrong side of the strip but uh let's not worry about paying attention to shit like that here's one of the base where they get overrun during part of the film um i did love a lot of the footage of the the hueys yeah it I was, love Huey's dude. That's what we I had Blackhawks in when I was in, and I'm sure they had them when you were in. But oh man, yeah. Huey's were the shit. Out of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell you, uh, the MPs. One of their combat uh, jobs is uh, RACO, Rear Area Combat Operations. Uh, you got a front line. They drop troops behind the line. The MPs are the ones that go get them, and that's why we have to learn how to drop out of helicopters with repelling lines, repelling rigs. Um, I, I, I wanted to say real quick, didn't I just see Timothy Hutton's dad? Isn't he in this movie? Jim Hutton is in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very good actor. Died young. Yep. Um, Tim looks just like him, too. Really does. Right. He has a lot of his mannerisms. Mm-hmm. His voice doesn't sound like him now. No. That's one big difference. I love that. Still, they're made that way. <laughs> Point towards enemy. Point towards enemy. Yeah, the world's greatest shotgun shell. That's it. It is. It's a giant shotgun shell. We yeah. were taught how to improvise those things. Um, you would have the casing, and but if you didn't have all the 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 uh, shot, you could add other things in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were taught to use nails, things like that. Put them in there. Yep. And Basically, David Jansen is actually in, in the book. David Jansen's character is the central character. Yeah. Yeah, there he is. Yep, Tim Hutton. Um, Jim Hutton. Yep. And uh it's short round. <laughs> yeah, I like this kid. I do yeah. like yeah. this kid in the movie because he in many ways he's one of the main characters in the story. Um you know, he's he's the little boy at the end of Old Yeller. Mm-hmm. Aldo Ray and Aldo Ray of course is a uh, World War II veteran really? he served in the US Navy during World War II he was deployed of course man it's been a long time since I've seen this movie dude wow gonna have to revisit it again soon what's up with these Navy dudes Oh, the, they're, they're they that, in that scene. Hutton, he, yes, he's, he's, stealing, he's stealing material from them. Yep. And they get really pissed when <laughs> they're running <laughs> towards him. He's like, see you guys. <laughs> and he gets lifted <laughs> up the pallet. We need this shit. You don't. Fuck you. <laughs> in the Navy. Anyway. Um, and that happens a lot. I'm going to tell you, uh, there's a lot of thievery. Uh, even in it, just in the army, uh, I, I told people, man, we would walk by lockers, and if you see a, another squad or platoon left their shit unlocked, we would steal their shit and take it for our squad. Or it's your job to keep them responsible. Recon, it. man, it's it, it is. There's George Takei. Mm-hmm. Oh my! Oh my! I love the look of everybody in this scene because this is really, uh, you know, when I listen to stories of from my brother and from others who served in Vietnam, just wet, hot, hot and wet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody's drenched. Yep. This is it would rain and then it would get really muggy. <laughs> right. That's why. That's why a lot of them got trained at Fort Pope. They still call that place Little Vietnam to this day. Because that was one of the main uh, training points for troops going to Vietnam because of the conditions here. It rains. It gets muggy as hell. You know, it, it, it taught them about the, the 
the wear and tear your body takes from humidity, which it, it, it can kick your ass, no doubt. Yep. Uh, and again, you know, I'll, I'll go into it at the end. Um, uh, here, here's something, uh, one of the factual errors, uh, in the film, when Peterson is first confronted by Colonel Kirby for pilfering from his unit, Peterson neither comes to attention nor salutes Colonel C Kirby, which is a, a fuck up. Yeah. This is such a huge breach of military courtesy. Uh, and absolutely that colonel would have smoked him for it. Yep. Um, and when you hear me use the word smoke, what that means is they would physically trash you in front of everybody. Uh, physical discipline was used all the time. And um, you don't give a, a senior officer a salute. They're going to smoke you. They will, uh, they will fucking ruin your day. Now, now remember, guys, they're indoors. That's what he's talking about there. Outside, they probably wouldn't do it because they'd probably get the guy shot if they were in a combat zone. So. And by the way, they had a special... They actually used the military uh, um, technician in this film. Uh, it's in the credits at the beginning. Uh, and I do believe he was a colonel and special forces. And uh, he was the one who made sure that everybody was... Um, wore their uniforms and, and um, had their badges and everything in the right spot. So really, uh, I've only heard a handful of people say something about the uniforms in this. So uniforms are one of the few things that they pretty much get right in this. Do you see Calverman's uh, comment? That's probably yes. a reference to it, man. That's probably yeah, a John Matrix. However, it looks like more, more like uh, Colonel Trotman. Yeah, see, this looks more like Europe for most of the shots, and it bugs me. Yeah. Than it does the jungles of Vietnam. Where are the palm trees? What's up? Not even an attempt to put a palm tree in there. Oh, good. No, dude, let me tell you, I love the tiger stripes, man. Those old tiger stripe jungle fatigues. Yeah, cool looking. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, and anybody that was in the military knows this is true, that uh, camo is not designed to make you blend in. It's designed to break up the human form. That's it. Uh, break it, up the outline. It, there's a huge mistake people make. This is another one I call bullshit on, wearing pajamas. Yeah. I've never bullshit. met anybody that wore pajamas grace. in the military. You fucking wear your boxers and maybe a t-shirt. Yeah. You're always in uniform. Mm -hmm. always and uh you sleep in uniform because you are wearing your military issued uh boxer i smell briefs, some hollywood uh, hollywood uh, t-shirts uh, uh background guys going on oh there. patrick wayne john wayne's boy never served love plain soldiers yep. i preferred him in cowboy movies last real good performance by patrick wayne was in the movie rustler's rhapsody I don't Where know if I ever saw a movie with him in it, other than this. Oh, I've seen tons of Patrick Wayne movies. Uh, he was in one of the Sinbad movies. Really? Well, yeah, okay. he played well, Sinbad. I probably didn't recognize him then, yeah. Yeah, when I when I want to watch a, an Arabic hero, I want him played by a Wayne. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, exactly. After you eat the uh, peanuts out of my <laughs> a, a shit. A Wayne in brown face, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get him really tanned and fit. Oh, Jeebus is breaching. Hollywood backdoor, guys. Yeah, we've had two What's breaches, that? so pause it for a second. <clears throat> oh, that was an oh my stance if and I ever saw one. <laughs> Did you see that? He had his hands on his hips. He's like. <laughs> now for Anima's breach, I'm going to play uh, this one because I know she likes it. Well, no, this is her favorites right here. Front door team and back door team. There we go. And then for Monkey Jeebus, um, I guess I'll play this one because th he's the one who suggested this one. Maybe we can get in through the back door. There you go. <laughs> now, I was really wanting to play this video today for uh, Don because uh, I brought this on here. Don, if you're watching, Don Eka, here you go. This video is for you. Dave. And oh, Matthew, what is it now? For God's sake, no one's smoking, okay? But, but nothing! You know what we need around here is an anti-whining ordinance. So just sip your sniffling with a lip and hold your skinny ass out of here! 
one of my favorite moments on news radio. Absolutely one of the greatest TV series ever created. Thing I hate about using my iPad for this, it's great for the background for the show, but I can't hear anything when you play those videos. On the iPad, it drowns out the, the sound. Okay. Um, I'm going to play this one because it was actually one of my favorite moments in uh, season three of Picard, which I hated Uh-oh. that show. But I, lo- I did enjoy season three, and it was one of my favorite moments. I believe we have enough juice to get us there. What makes you think there hasn't already been destroyed? Data, could you try and be a little more positive? I hope we die quickly. I remember that. That's the one where you go to this phase, man. Quickly, right? Yeah. I, I giggled quickly. when he said that line. I'm like, what a great man. line. That's great. Not to get off on a tangent, but thoroughly enjoyed that show. That was pretty pretty damn good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will still not watch it officially because uh, I'm I'm scared of, of, you know, Kurtzman being rewarded for right all of his bad behavior but let's see john lovett supposedly punched out oh no it was a slap fest is what that was it was uh it was at his club it was at lovett's club and uh andy dick made the comment and i think it was made previously too that he put the uh phil hartman curse on him and everybody knows uh, that knows anything about what happened uh, Andy Dick is a major player in why his, you know, Phil Hartman's wife, I think his name, name is Bree. Um, she went off, the, she'd been clean for a while, I think years. And they went to a party and Andy Dick talked her into taking a bump of cocaine and it sent her onto a bender that led to that night when she was high, got into an argument with Phil, Phil's said, I'm going to bed, laid down, uh, turned his back to her. She came in with the pistol and shot him in the back of the head and killed him. And then she went out on another bender, ran into a friend, told her what she did. He brought her back home, saw what she did. She laid down next to um, Phil in the bed, and he called the police. And um, when the police arrived, because you can hear her take the shot. You can hear it on the recording uh, because the TV crew is there and uh, with the kids in the house, man, the children in the house, she shot herself. And I'm like, Dick's uh, "Hmm." getting it back in spades right now, though. Is he still karma? Karma can be a real motherfucker. Yeah. Is he still homeless trying to? I hope so. Do video logs and stuff. Because, you know. A lot of you know that I, I'm the founder of the Blade Runner fan club, bladezone.com, still the number one Blade Runner website in the world. I don't work there anymore. I help run the um, Twitter page, and that's it. Facebook, too. But um, I really, it's Gary Willoughby and, and uh, Gary Carden. Yeah, everybody named, that runs Bladezone is named Gary. Seriously, wow. it's weird. Um, <laughs> Gary Carden is from the UK, and Gary Willoughby is from Ohio. But and he still has that Ohio way of talking. I love Gary's voice. He, I love it. He says, "My name is Gary. Your name is Gary." Now, uh, thanks for explaining that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gary. He's a great guy. He really is. Did our guest one of my oldest friends? Day. I've known him for thirty, almost thirty years. Did our guest the other day get you back in touch with Mr. Uh, Mr. Wong? James Wong? Uh, no, but we did talk about it. <clears throat> oh, I remember. Yeah. I was there, but I, I was just... No, I mean, after the show, we talked about it, oh, too. okay. Because yeah. um, that's somebody that's a friend of mine in real life. Yeah. I, I did a formal introduction between him and, and um, Shinatsky. So... Who's in the chat? Who's here? Right. Yep, there's fucking say the devil's name, and he pops up. And, and he shall appear. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, there's that. That's what got him into trouble. Uh, yeah, and that's true. I've had other people call me that. Gay, gayry. I've had people call me that. Um, I always, I would make fun of people. I'm, like, in school, it's, it's, somebody's trying to mess with me, and they'd call me. Kiss Hell was a popular one. Uh, the most popular, 
was Howard Cosell. <laughs> they would call me Cosell. And I'm like, I didn't mind that. Uh, I think the one that tripped me out and I didn't like was um, I got well known because I won a local contest, a big one, by doing some of my improv comedy and, and impersonation. I was just like 14, man. Won this major contest in town and uh, doing comedy. And I did Richard Nixon. One of them was Richard Nixon selling Colgate toothpaste. <laughs> and and he, and he, you know, the, I, I can't remember the whole thing. And it went like, uh, my fellow Americans, I'm here to talk to you about Watergate. I mean, Colgate. <laughs> yeah, I wrote this whole thing on my own. And finally, That's at the awesome. end, I do the whole, I go through the whole mime routine of putting the toothpaste on. I put the toothbrush up to my mouth and I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. And uh, won the contest. But because of that, I got nicknamed Tricky Dick. And, yep. and of course, <clears throat> that nickname, everything gets shortened. It always gets truncated down. They try to we, you know, whittle it down. <clears throat> and then mm -hmm. it became tricky. And then it became trick. And this went on for like three years, this variation of the name. And then one of my black friends misheard it. Because I looked a lot like John Ritter from uh, the TV series, um, what's it called? Uh, Three's, Three's Company. Three's, Three's Company. Company, yeah. I had the same kind of haircut, the split down the middle, sort of long. And so everybody, th this kid misheard that, and he thought I was being called Trip. And he called me Tripper and Trip. And so I had some people call me Trick, some people call me Trip. And then eventually it just became Trip. And I'm just like, can I just get back to being called Gary? Right? <laughs> my I'm name okay is with Gary. It. I'm okay with being called by my natural birth name. Right. <laughs> and uh, that was high school for me. The worst nickname I had that pissed me off was Star Wars. I'm like friends with, you've met some of my friends on this show. I've had them on here from, from school that I grew up with. They're all fucking nerds. Every one of them, far bigger nerds than me. But who got stuck with the name Star Wars? Me. Because I could walk around and I would spout facts about Star Wars. So I just knew all this shit, read all the books, all that stuff back in the well, day. Well, that, you're, you're the size of a Wookiee. So, yeah. Hey. Got me Jack back. Tripper. Come and knock on our door. <laughs> See, everybody but, uh, thought that blonde, I, what was it, Summers? That yeah, it's the Sun Summers. Everybody thought she was just a babe, and I was like, okay, go ahead. Enjoy. I didn't like her. I prefer Joyce DeWitt. Yeah. She was Me my too. type. I like I liked the girl. Uh, blondes were not my fave growing up. No. I knew a lot of blondes. I liked the brunettes. Gingers, mm -hmm. too. Redheads, man. Fucking redheads. So we'll get back to this here. I push play. So. <laughs> We've got uh, a few minutes here before our break. I didn't get to say good morning to Bill. So good morning, Bill. Hope everybody's having a good day today. Uh, Jansen. Again, Jansen was actually the central character from the book. Because uh, it's his story. He's telling the story of what happened here. He was the embedded journalist. And there he is from uh, uh, They Live, the preacher. Do you think they chose to put him in that uh, button-down pocket shirt to make him look like Dan Rather, or no? That's a good think, question. Do you think that was a design choice they made? Because Veterans, guys who served didn't like him. I know, I know. I'm just he was, saying. He was so a. Uh, he looks just like him. He was you know a backdoor I mean? commie. There you go. I did my uh, what? <laughs> um. And by the way, when you watch military movies, nothing will piss somebody off more than wearing their berets wrong. You wear your headgear wrong, man. You can piss off a whole group of soldiers. I mean, they did his hair like him and everything. Well, that's just Jansen. Jansen yeah, never changed his hair to anything. Yeah. He's got to have the S curl. Yeah. He's, well, he's always got that fucking duck's ass. He, he always wore a mm -hmm. DA. It's like my dad. My dad wore a DA till he died. <laughs> he died and he's in his casket. No shit. I have pictures. I took photos from my memory 
of my father in his casket. I will never share them publicly. They're, they're mine. And uh, laying there in that casket with a fucking DA. <laughs> a little, little fucking curl up in the front. My dad. He was a greaser. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, they, they, they do make a big thing about it, the uh, Pugo sticks in this. Or bungee sticks. I'm sorry. Bungee, bungee sticks. Yeah. Right. The raspberry. Raspberry beret. The kind you find in a secondhand store. Mm. Mm. I like these. I like these huts. Those are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the Marine Corps because I was looking for a few good men. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. We tease each one. other. Uh, the, hey the man, if you if you ever wonder where Gary gets the gay humor from, it's from the fucking military. Don't oh my god, there's so much. It's the truth. It's like there's so many jokes about man. Uh, we're so close. Are, are we gay now? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I mean, I see your penis a lot. <laughs> like, so make us partners? <laughs> no, we're battle booze. Stop it. <laughs> and I got to tell you, Walter Koenig uh, had a big role in this. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I don't know what killed his career because his career uh, was up and coming in the sixties, man. And um, and yeah, phrasing. Um, <laughs> oh, I miss those LBEs, man. I loved wearing those things. Uh, LBEs uh, with. With the um, shoulder straps to carry gear in. I love that. <clears throat> lower bearing equipment. Load bearing equipment. Load yeah. bearing. Yeah, not lower. Load. Load bearing. So you could, all your packs were on it, medical stuff. Then on top of that, I had a 40 pound medic pack. And on top of that, my 60 pound Alice pack. Oh, man. I really want to re re uh, recreate a couple of my uniforms. I really do. I've got, I've got my, cl uh, my, uh, I got my class A's. I do have that. Uh, I want to recreate the one that, that most of these guys in this scene are wearing. Um, not the green grays themselves, but the other military guys. It's the slanted pocket jungle fatigues. The ODs though. Uh, I was part of the last unit that was issued those. I like that one. Do any airborne <laughs> units use raspberry beret as <laughs> cadence? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we, we uh, Johnson and Atoll was the last military unit in the, in the Army that was issued Vietnam-era jungle fatigues to work in. Yeah. And I loved it just because of the boots, boots, because they had canvas sides instead of uh, uh, leather. You know the sides of them, yeah. And oh man, so much nicer in the heat. Oh my gosh, the so breathe, breathe, and your feet weren't dying as much. I got to point out here that this club is is looks like something out of a '40s movie. Yeah, it's like this. John Wayne was so stuck in the past and how he yeah made he film. was, and he did co-direct this film. You know, but this nightclub scene just fucking slays me it's like yeah even the way this is lit um i'm not complaining about the location i'm not complaining about the way they're dressed i'm complaining about the look yeah um this looks like they're in a hollywood uh noir film or something that open club just the way they shot it it just that looks so weird isn't that Hawaii Five-O guy? Isn't this to? the beginning of an Indiana Jones movie? Right. <laughs> Isn't that Hawaii Five-O guy to the left? Uh, that's Jack Sue. No, it's Jack Sue from Barney Miller. Okay, that's it. Okay, I knew it was a cop show of some sort. For a secretization license, I don't know, man. I don't know what that is. So, um, I, you know, look, this film is what it is. Uh, I'm going to pause it now because we've got to go to 
break. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, the movie is what it is, period. Uh, can't it's change It's a propaganda it. piece. At the time, that's what it was. It really is. I rarely call military films propaganda films uh, after World War II. World War II, look, we were in a war, war footing, a huge war footing in the United States. So the films are called propaganda, but really what it is is a morale booster. Propaganda yeah. is the, propaganda is very specific, where it's a right. specific thing or does specific things. This one... I feel is torn. I'm torn over whether it's propaganda or morale boosting because what he was trying to do was boost the morale of the yeah. American soldier. Because we're, here at home, the American media was war, run yeah. by the commies, the communists. Was? <clears throat> was being run by the communists at the time because I'm speaking past tense. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the onset of what we have today, which is just simply the communist news network. Um, MSNBC, all of them are, are commies. They're all commies. Uh, they don't like to say they're not, but they are. They're, they're communists. They're socialists. Socialism is communism. It's just democratically elected communism. That's all it is. There's no difference between what they do. Uh, it is guys who are on the top do great. Those of us that are workers that work for a living are going to suffer under it. And a sacred pilgrim. There you go. Well, there you go, Pilgrim. (laughs) Now we'll go to break. (laughs) Hi, guys. This is Gary from Pop Culture Minefield here on KGRA, and we're leaving for our first break. I hope we survive. Did you know 75% of... Hey members, the new KGRA DB app is now available on iOS and Android devices. Gain on-demand access to any KGRA DB programming. Download any show directly to your mobile device to listen or watch on the go. Go to the App Store and search KGRA DB. Oh wow, we survived! Welcome back to the commercial break. Now for some more pop culture minefield on KGRA. Yay! Yay! <clears throat> and of Peace course, I yeah, yeah, good morning to our listeners over on KGRA. I hope you all are having a good Monday. Um, so again, we're talking about the film The Green Berets with John Wayne. John Wayne. And it is a mixture of uh, uh, propaganda and uh, you know morale boosting. It's, it's a mixture of both. Um, it's definitely I, a pro-American film. Very pro-American, pro-American soldier, mm-hmm. um, which I don't mind that one. Uh, that part I always like when you try to show uh, our, our servicemen and women in a, in a positive light. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would say 90 to 95% of um, our military are just amazing guys doing their job, gals. But uh, good God. We all know. We all knew douche nozzles in the military. Oh, man. Um, and in the military, you can't fire them. And no, we would, you can't. promote them. Get them the hell away from us. Get them the hell out of there. Um, there's a lot of actors you'll spot there. Like that guy. That's um, uh, Buford T. Pusser's um, son from the Burt Reynolds movies, uh, <laughs> Smoking the Bandit. That was the son, the, the idiot son. Uh, each Pop- system of governance yeah. picks the winners and losers. The goal is to pick the fairest. Representative democracy and capitalism tend to do that. The chief uh, 
great movie. By the way, good morning, Patrick Jordan. How are you doing, sir? Um, <clears throat> and uh, in our culture, uh, you have people. I'm not saying that they're uh, just in the media, but they're pretty much in the media. doesn't matter if it's entertainment or news. It's all part of the same animal that like to disparage everything that we believe and love. And uh, so if there's a, a, a anti-propagandism, it, it's it's them. They create propaganda against us. Like uh, I brought up his name, Brian De Palma. Is yes, I was fixing to say. You got Brian John De Palma Wayne trying is, to put us in a good light. You got De Palma putting us in a bad light. That light to make us look bad. Yeah. This is the scene where they get overrun. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I was hoping. There he is again. You see him? Yep. Junior, whatever he was calling at those movies. <laughs> I, when I get home, I'm going to slap your mother. Mama, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, this is the overrun scene where they get hit. Um, and of course, the story takes place in 65. So this is way before the Tet Offensive. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're advisors at this point. We don't really have uh, too many boots on the ground. Uh, there at this time. And speaking of boots, because uh, I saw uh, Che brought that up, uh, what they wore is, uh, was nicknamed the McNamara, which was, uh, it's what we still wear today is the jungle boot. It's um, it's better in many ways than the old World War II boots that were all leather. I had one of those too. When you're in basic training, you wear leather boots most of the time, at least when we were in. Um you wear those, you got to spit shine them, do all that shit. We had a trick to doing that by heating up the um, uh, polish and uh, mm -hmm. putting it on that way. But I got to tell you, man, um, when we get to permanent party, you get issued your jungle boots. And mine were, of course, prepping up for Desert Shield and Desert Storm. We got the um, sand colored. Right, the tan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, but in Vietnam, that's where they were created. And these are they're also called jungle boots. But mm -hmm. the problem with jungle boots and he here's a lot of that battle scene here where they're fending off, you know, defending the base. Mm -hmm. This is a, 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 a battle between the NVA and the Viet Cong. Because once a lot of people don't know this, that the Viet Cong weren't a thing anymore after 68. We killed them. The. You'll hear the media. They love to talk about how we lost the Vietnam War in '68, and it's like one of no, the we battles didn't. we lost. The we war. killed the, the 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 Viet Cong. We killed them. There is there were just nothing anymore after that. All we we're fighting after '68 was the North Vietnamese, and we kicked their ass. It was really bad, and especially once Nixon had the balls to uh, bomb Hanoi. He took the fight to him, started bombing, sending missions in openly sending missions in to Cambodia. No, no more of the secret shit, like uh, what they depict in Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Um, that situation was also very successful. The real Colonel Kurtz was not crazy. He beat the shit out of the, the enemy. And uh, it, it was a major victory for us. Um, and we forced the North Vietnamese to meet us in Paris peace talks because they were done. They couldn't fight anymore. It was getting to the point where we we're going to be fighting the Chinese again is where it was heading because mm -hmm. the Chinese were uh, invested in North Vietnam. And uh, it's the same thing that happened in Korea because in the, the, the Korean War, we were fighting the Chinese. A lot of people don't know that. And, um, and the same thing was getting ready to happen in Vietnam as we got into the 70s. Nixon stopped that shit, ended it quickly. And the Chinese said, you're on your own. And that's when the North Vietnamese met us in Paris and they signed the peace treaty, the, the Paris Accords. And mm -hmm. um, the problem was we had to enforce that treaty. Oh, look at that Europe shot. It doesn't even look like Vietnam. No, uh, it doesn't. There's a beast of a plane right there. C-47, DC-3. Uh, hell of a plane. You could shoot off... 70% of that wing and it'll still go because the propellers are that close to the body. Mm -hmm. It would just keep going. Um, 
we got them in the Paris peace talks and we go back and everything's good. And then our Congress defunds the war effort and we had to pull out early. Yeah. You know, that's never good. No. Pull out early. Nobody's, nobody's happy on that one. And, um, fuck man. <laughs> I wish uh, Don was here. So we could talk more about the history of Vietnam war. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a big aficionado of it. I, I know what my dad's told me about it and stuff. Uh, the Paris Pete talks were almost ruined. Yeah, that, that's why I was laughing I know, at this I saw one. The movie. Yeah. Yeah. They're in rare form uh, out there, man. No doubt. Now, I'll tell you, uh, I was about to tell you, the uh, they called him the McNamara's, those boots, because he was the guy who brought it about, those mm -hmm. boots. Yeah. Don uh, loved this guy. Here's the pro. Oh, well, McNamara's a piece of shit. Um, I believe it was done for cost, jungle boots. They would rot in mm -hmm. the, the jungle they were designed to breathe because mm -hmm. leather boots don't breathe no. but they had these new canvas they were like tennis shoes really in many ways and you it was know, what is the ground was shoes. you get trench foot with, with, but without the you get, well, yeah. trench foot was the problem with leather boots mm -hmm. uh you're less saying. likely yeah. with the uh canvas boots but the problem was that the it was so wet <laughs> in vietnam it was wet all the time as rob went yeah, I got up this morning wet, wet and hot. <laughs> wet and hot. What's the weather report? Wet and hot. Wet and hot. <laughs> and they would just rot your boots. They would start just the minute they they hit that environment, that canvas would not last long. No. So they went through a lot of boots in Vietnam. It's much better in the desert. Those those boots will last forever in the in the desert. Not not in the jungle, man. They are not good jungle boots. Is it me or is every female in this show dressed like they're going to a cocktail party? Yeah, it's just so fucking weird. <laughs> so fucking weird. Everybody is dressed like they're in a 40s movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, You're right. John Wayne was stuck in the past, man. The Psycho is here. What is up? That's what she said. <laughs> Um, I think one of my favorite jokes I told back in the eighties when I was trying out comedy was, uh, how, uh, condoms are made out of the same material that you get in house paint. So I'd go buy a gallon of that stuff, slap it on. That shit was good for a couple of years. <laughs> I'm just sitting here noticing the uniforms. They're wearing piss pots, man. Uh, yeah. Yep. The old M1 I, helmet. I, 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 uh. Yeah, you can shave in it. Yeah, uh, just. I love those things, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the helmet liner came out, and you could, right. you know. Yeah. We used it that way too. Wash for, with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we have super training. sticker from Darius. Darius, four dollars super sticker. I know it's on there. It's some coffee and a pair. That is correct. Oh, you had to say coffee, didn't you? I I love the jungle fatigues in a non jungle <laughs> setting. It just fucking kills me. Um, I gotta find out where this was shot. Shooting location, the Green Berets, Fort Benning, Columbus, Georgia, Fort McClellan, uh, Stage Five Warner Brothers, uh, Hurlbut Field, Florida, USA. So it was shot in Florida. Did jungle. you just say Fort McClellan? Yeah. Yeah. That's Alabama. In northern Alabama. It's in the mountains of Alabama. Yeah, they use Fort Benning, Fort McClellan, and some of it was shot in Columbus, Georgia. And uh all non-jungle. Florida comes close. If they had shot it more, but Florida's a scary place to shoot once you get into the jungle aspects of Florida, because there's a lot of gators and poisonous snakes. They should have shot this in Hawaii. They should have shot it in Hawaii. The trees look so fucked up. It's good to know the Krauts are here. Aldo Ray. Let's go kill us some Jerry's. <laughs> hey, we should play the Darius video.
You keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. And the word today is Darius. Yes. What else? Darius. Mr. Munchausen. Uh, you watch the extras on, oh yeah, Georgia. Just absolutely shitty place to shoot a Vietnam War film. John Wayne. John Wayne again. I'm not saying John Wayne was an idiot, because he wasn't. But when it came to making his films, he had a real problem. Like, uh, I had problems with how they shot uh, his other film that he directed, The Alabama. Told from the first hand source that the Chinese gold was rumored to be transported back to the U.S. on Navy ships during the war with Vietnam. I don't know anything about that one. I really don't. I know the, the, I know the history of the war. I don't know a lot of the stuff that took place in country. I don't know stuff like that. Gators, uh, look, man, um, <laughs> watch my, my duck get eaten by a gator right in front of me. Wow. And, uh, I'm not a big fan, so I eat gators. I like to eat gator. I hey, eat gator meat's good, man. Yeah, it's. I love, and when I'm in, especially when I'm in New Orleans, there's this one bar I go to down uh, in the French Quarter mm -hmm. that serves three different uh, variations of gator meat. They have one that's baked, they have fried, and they have blackened. Oh man! And I there love, I love gator nuggets. Um, we have a bar here that serves gator nuggets, man. Like, would you like some gator nuggets? I'm like, hell Two yeah. types of meat you should never turn down. Gator and shark. Shark is fantastic. I've eaten a lot of shark. Yep. Uh, shark steaks. And mm -hmm. they are really good. And it, even though they are fish, I got to tell you, man, they eat no, like it's, red it's meat. No, it's like eating it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's borderline almost a, a, a beef kind yeah. of. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I tell people all the time, when I eat shark, I have uh, a red wine. Mm -hmm. Like when you have fish, you should have white wine, a dry right. wine. Right, but, but shark. Not with shark, man. man. Yep. Not with shark. Uh, I always serve red wine with my shark. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, man, I like, to, I like eating that. And I like to, um, what do you call it? The, the other game fish, uh, the big one, marlin. Marlin, yeah. Uh, Marlin's another one that's like that. You serve that, serve that with, I serve it with red wine. It's good stuff, man. Good yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, oh, by I the way. You uh, that I had two pet crocodiles, so I'm feeling very offended. <laughs> well, that's a different animal, isn't it? We watching the next week. It's the same thing. <laughs> uh, the, the crocodile is not the same as a gator. No yeah, they're, they're bigger than gators. Oh, V did not like um, gator? Really? Um, the Wings of Eagles is on my list, by the way. It is on my list. But I, I love gator. I, I will eat the shit out of it. Yeah, me uh, too. That gator. gator. That's a man-eating gator right there. Look at <laughs> Here's where it becomes... Who would uh, be uh, capable of eating your national bird? the fuck are you talking about, Martin? You're talking he about... Gator, not eagle. No, he said Eagle gator. wings? He said gator. By the way, one of my favorite jokes I made about uh, the state of Missouri... Uh, I posted an image, uh, a video. It says, and ladies and gentlemen, the state bird of Missouri, and it's a, it fades up into a fucking recluse spider reared up. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking spider That's is funny. everywhere in Missouri, man. It's the state bird. <laughs> My brother and I used to draw, uh, you know, a lot of jokes and stuff. And one of them, I, I drew the state bird of Louisiana. You know, it's a pelican, but... I drew an aircraft carrier launched a bunch of huge mosquitoes. That that was the state bird we said of Louisiana mosquitoes. <laughs> now, by the way, they're showing a French car there. That is very actually that's very common in Vietnam. There were a lot of French. Uh, there's somebody from the '80s right there. Yeah. <laughs> was that Eddie Murphy from Raw? <laughs> right. Jack. Yeah. Weren't, weren't the French there before uh, uh, before we were? Yep. Yeah, French Indochina. Um, I really did like. Um, yeah, this is where they show how people get picked up, and um, so they have a catch on the front, and they put up a blimp, and the plane catches it, and then they bring the guy up into the plane. For you mega nerds, you saw him use it in the Dark Knight. But yep, yeah, yep, it's the same thing. 
However, you don't get picked up right up <laughs> like in this no. movie. No, <laughs> yes, you better hope you're not getting hit by trees and shit. <laughs> yeah, what I find interesting is they don't show uh, the what they called at the time the um, XM48 uh, grenade launcher that was up underneath the M16 because they knew, I'm hoping that they knew better because it wasn't yeah. used. It was being used in 68. It was not being used uh, in 65, which is when this is supposed to take place. Right? Taking place. Yeah. So they paid attention to the weapons again. It was called They're, an M203 yeah. was uh, when I was in. M203, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, No, they were using that breakaway one, right? The, the pistol grip one? Oh, and they had to do the, the bungee scene again. Yep. Bungee, not bungee. Whatever they're called. <laughs> I never had to d deal with them, so. Look at those planes. There's an old Patton tanks. Wow. Yeah, this this definitely doesn't look like Vietnam. <laughs> mm. That looks like Northern Alabama. <laughs> it's just, it just really location shooting on this was just awful. Yeah. But God love him, John was trying to do good. He was trying to support the cause. Come on. Yeah, he was. He was. Give him a he break. bled red, red, white, and blue. Uh Oh, uh, John, she wants to know how much weight you've lost. Oh, uh, well, we're pushing 80. Outstanding, dude. Proud That's of you, awesome, man. dude. Now we're in the last moments here. And, of course, he learns that Jim Hutton's character is dead. Little boy's running around yelling for him. Gets all Hamchuck is the guy's name. Or, no, what was his name? I yeah, forget Hamchuck. Hutton's name. Yeah. Dead, what's Hamchuck? This is where the preacher from the movie gets brought out. Medic! Like medics would have to be called over. They're, they've been all, all over that already. They've been prepared. They've been called ahead of time and out there waiting for him. Um, that was Air Cav, by the way. I love the patch. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is your old yeller ending. You found out that old yeller or Jim Hutton was killed. Yeah. And the boy's like, where are you? You know, and, he, and John Wayne's like got that look in his eye, watching him running from chopper to chopper, yelling for the guy. And he's not there. He's dead. And then walks over and they have that little moment that's supposed to be the sunset. But the problem is they're on the east side of the, of the country. So they're actually, that's a sunrise. <laughs> yeah. So it would have been nice if they had just, this had been like a night shot and then the sun came up. That would have been so much better, but oh well. No one will notice. <laughs> Nobody will really care. Everybody who knows where Denang is will know. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't lose. You can't still swing Odin's hammer. Is that the name of your penis? Oh, my. <laughs> ah. Again, our, that's our army humor coming through, my army thing. Swinging, I'm swinging Odin Hammer, baby. <laughs> Woo -hoo! All right, the way I got to tell you, uh, unless you hate like black and fish and all that stuff, um, I would suggest if you had a problem with the meat, have it blackened. It, it just absolutely, uh, one, it's juicier, and I love blackened gator, man. It's really good. I love Most those Cajun Creole spices, man. Mm -hmm. Fried's really good, too, like his nuggets. That is a good one. They bread it and everything. It's really good. Uh, so now he walks out there and, and tells the kid how, how you know proud of him uh, Jim Hutton's character would be. And, and he says, what will happen to me? You know, and he's like, um, I'll worry about that like somehow that he'll figure out all the bureaucracy of getting him to the States. Yeah. And, uh, but you don't know, cause that's, that's horrifying, mm -hmm. you know, for these kids that are orphaned over there, you know, and so many of them didn't come home. They got stuck over there. Their lives were shit. A lot of them died. 
And uh, so he puts Jim Hutton's uh, beret on him. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is one of those touching. I try. Yeah, it's a cute yep. scene, sad scene. It's the thing I remember most about this movie is Jim Hutton's death. Yeah, in the in the final mission. Yeah. And look, I think he would have survived if he hadn't worn his pajamas in country. <laughs> yep. It's all about the pajamas. That's how you knew he was doomed. The pajamas. First of all, the VC wore pajamas, man, black pajamas. Yeah. Like, what, what the hell's wrong with you? Wrong war, motherfucker. <laughs> Jim Hutton was a big star. You know, a lot of people don't know this. He was in Cary Grant's last movie. Cary Grant made the decision he didn't get the girl. Jim Hutton did at the end because he said, I'm too old to get the girl. And there's that sunrise. Oh, it's supposed to be a sunset, but it's sunrise because they're in Da Nang. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. They're on the east coast of the Vietnamese peninsula, peninsula so. <laughs> um, look, it's a classic film. I'm not going to call it great because it's not great. It's um, No. As a matter of fact, the aesthetic of it, I mean, you can't even I have so many problems with that film. The things that they got right, I feel, were outweighed by the stuff that they got wrong yeah. in the film. And it's just really bad. It's sort of like when they show the Alamo. If you're going to show the tell the story of the Alamo, make sure you show be honest about what happened to those guys. Right. Um, as heroic as Bowie's, you know, Bowie was, his death was ugly. It yeah. was an ugly death, mm -hmm. brutal death. You know, he was sick, wounded, and they came in and just fucking murdered him. They weren't supposed to, and they did. Santa Ana was a piece of shit. Santa Ana was a brutal son of a gun. Yep. Very brutal. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he was angry. And he was angry at them, and he took it out on them. Uh, but anyway, that's another story for another day. We should do that one. I would love to talk yeah. about uh, yeah. the Alamo, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas, man, damn, they are proud of that story. And as well, they should be. Texas. They should be. I mean... Last stand, man. A lot of people don't know that uh, the Mexicans who had relocated to Texas uh, considered themselves Texicans. Mm -hmm. They they weren't Mexicans anymore. They considered themselves Texans. That was their and country. They gave, yep. And they got that name, Texicans. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they died there fighting for the Alamo. You know, brutal battle. And it was uh, a, div a diverse culture of people. You had whites. You had uh was one black that was there, but he was a slave of somebody. I forget who it is um, at the time, but he still stayed and fought. He was given the choice to leave. He stayed. Um, was it Jim Bowie? Is it Jim Bowie? Not sure. I, I got to go back no, and read because it's been a while since I read. When I want to talk Alamo, I call my buddy Dallas. He is all about Texas. and, and, and Is he yeah, called he's Dallas because he's from Dallas? Dallas? Uh, that's yeah. He's he's from there. He lives here. So it's not an ironic nickname. At no, all. it's not. He is completely. Look, he's a Dallas Cowboys fan, Dallas Stars, all that shit. He's. he's I already about, don't like him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. But he's I grew up in Virginia, him. and uh, we're Redskins supporters. The Redskins we, supporters. Yep, I understand. And we hated Dallas. Hated. You mean him. Commanders? And uh, hey, those of us that know the lore of the Redskins are going to continue to call them. Yeah, that. We don't, yeah I still we'll call them the call Redskins them too. We're not going to call them that. And I don't, I don't come up. Anymore. Look, you can't have an entire team of commanders. That's too many cooks in the kitchen. That's too many chefs and not enough Indians. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. I'll call them the commandos before I call them the commanders. Yeah, I like that noise. Um, we grew up as fans there uh, in, in Northern Virginia. And, Rich uh, tradition that team has, but I grew up let's not miles. dive off into that because I'll talk about it all day. John will take well, it. I was trying trying to get something on it. Is um, you know, I grew up in Northern Virginia, and uh, we're about fifty miles outside of D.C. Mm -hmm. and uh, Fredericksburg. Okay, and we supported the Redskins, big fans there, 
And then I moved to Stafford right across the bridge from Fredericksburg, the Rappahannock Bridge. Mm -hmm. And um, fucking Staubach moves there. Oh, and uh, Captain America, what's up? First thing he wants to do is he wants to build an airstrip and a community in, in Stafford. And I was there with uh, Laura and Gerhard Geschwapner, who are still, I still know them. They were my first bosses as an artist. They hired me as their lead artist for their magazine. International magazine, Selling Power magazine, top magazine, my first job as an artist. And um, I joined them in the fight against Staubach because he, he wanted to, we referred to it as Fair, he, he went into Fairfax Stafford because Fairfax was nothing but a bunch of strip malls. They ruined that place, ruined it, Brian. So we fought Roger Staubach. In the end, he kind of won, but he also lost. Well, you had to fight him because he was a Dallas Cowboy. That's why I was fighting. But he was a veteran. He was drafted. You know the guy was good because he got drafted out of the Naval Academy. That never happens. And they drafted him because even though they knew they weren't going to get him for two years because he had to do his military service. Yep. And uh, still. that's how good he was. They drafted him on the hopes he was still going to be good two years later. <laughs> he, he was a cowboy, so I, I don't care. Yeah, I know. I know. Cowboy Trump. My, dad, my dad actually, dude, his last posting was uh, Norfolk. He still lives in uh, uh, Virginia Beach area. I absolutely worked with uh, Quark. And I worked with PageMaker. Um, when I did one of my graphic jobs, wasn't just doing the artwork. I would do layout. And I learned all that shit. And not a fan. Not a fan. But I know how to lay out a magazine. How to do it properly. Because you do it in a different order. Than yeah. Because it's going to be um, uh, saddle stitched. And you got to know how to do that. But uh, even when I do comic books... Um, I've had to lay out my own comic books. And when you do that, you got to know how to use Quark or, or PageMaker, or wh whatever they're using at the time. They're all based off of Corel. They're all based off of the same principle. And you just got to know how to lay it out so it prints correctly. But um, but anyway, um, eh, it's a fun show. Um, I want to end it now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we man. still got a half but hour. I get to see you that often these days. Come on, man. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get in some uh, stuff here about Come the on, movie. Man. Uh, when the lieutenant, uh, Navy lieutenant, shows up at Camp Avoy 29, he states that he is part of the 91st Seabees. However, when you see him driving his bulldozer, it is marked U.S. Army. The Seabees are part of the Navy and they have their own equipment. Uh, another factual error. After returning to the Camp Savoy 29, Captain Nim states that he wants to go home to Hanoi, but first he wants to kill all filthy stinking Kong. Quote, end quote. The civil war in Vietnam was between the Republic of South Vietnam and the Viet Cong. North Vietnam, the capital of which is Hanoi, was separate country that aided the Viet Cong. So even if Captain Nim killed every single filthy stinking Kong in South Vietnam, North Vietnam would still be a communist nation and he still <laughs> couldn't go home. That's good. That's uh, a faux pas, I would say. Yeah. I did find it interesting that uh, a lot of the South Vietnamese actors were Japanese. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, the, the, I, there were two guys that are, are clearly Indian. Oh, really? I didn't catch oh, that. Yeah. When, the, when they're with the chieftain. Uh, and and the dog is then uh, treating the little girl's food. There are two guys that are, there are Indians. They're going. They're out straight off the quickie mart. Well, that's um, racist, right there. Yeah, <laughs> right. I know. I All know, right, but here's... I am minority, so I can do it. <laughs> He's got immunity. Listen to this guy. Uh, let's see. Uh, one of the um, factual errors, the final scene of the movie has Colonel... Co yeah, we already know that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I already know that one. I mentioned that one. So that's really... That's all they have on this movie? That's sad. Let me go to IMDB, see if they got some more mistakes. Let's go to their section. But that, you know, just the choice to make that movie at the time it was made. It's a pretty brave one because... This country, 
half of it was not behind that war at all. And he clearly made it trying to sway public opinion. Um, so it was what he was trying to do and it didn't yep. work. It didn't work. Kind of backfired on him. And vet, you know, Vietnam vets all kind of poke fun at the film. Yep. Uh, let's see. Audio visual unsynchronized when John Wayne's helicopter was hit and crashes uh, straps attached to the main rotor. Uh, you can actually see him when it drops. Yeah. Oh, that's no good. <laughs> um, main rotor is static, and you can see the, the cable oh, holding into no it. That's no good. At about 109 minutes into the movie, Kirby orders the following pre jump sequence port side stand up, starboard side stand up, hook up, stand in the door, go. He, he omits the order to check equipment. No jump master would ever omit this. Yeah. After the Americans arrive at the base camp, John Wayne, Colonel Kirby, introduces David Jansen to the camp commander by pointing his weapon at him. <laughs> yeah, that's a. I really fucking hate that in the military movies, Oops. pointing a muzzle of a weapon at somebody. Um, <laughs> that guy right there. Boom. <laughs> when Peterson is killed, that's, that's Jim Hutton's character. Yeah. Uh, by the booby trap at the end of the movie, Kirby picks up his pack but leaves the body without collect. Yeah, I know. U.S. Army, our motto, leave no man behind. Leave no man behind. Marines will do it. Tac- they do it for tactical reasons. I was going to say, at a minimum, they would. he would have grabbed oh. his dog tags. Gary, Gary let, let me show this picture. Yeah, go for it, man. Now, you have those guys around the, the girl in the black. Oh, they're definitely, they're Asian, but they're, they do not look East Asian. They look West Asian. That's interesting. I didn't catch that before. Uh, good catch, man. Um, after they parachute in on the mission to snatch the NVA general and the point man fights and kills the three VC, the rest of the unit arrives and is, and in his frustration, John Wayne's character. Oh yeah, fucking stupid scene. Look, Slams look the here. Three. No experienced military person on a mission with limited supplies would waste a perfectly working M60. Yeah, perfectly. I yeah, come that on. Uh, yeah, perfectly working. That's a contradiction. Uh, you never know when it may be needed. The colonel asks Captain Coleman uh, in another scene about villages in the vicinity. Coleman replies, quote, seven there were five and we have two with us end quote it plainly should be quote five there were seven and we have two with us end quote so he said the line wrong it sounds like somebody said their line wrong sergeant muldoon implies in another scene revolutionary war ended in 76 when it that's actually that's when um, it started started <laughs> and ended in 83 uh, again i i'm gonna bet that that's not a line written that way that's how it just ended up being said Right, but you know, let's let's pretend it's like um, Animal House, and you know, Belushi's character's on his roll when the Germans bomb Pearl Harbor. Germans, <laughs> he forget that he's Ger- rolling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, Germans. He's shh. He's on a roll. <laughs> forget he's rolling. Yep. Not great character in that movie, D Day. Uh, I love that D-Day. character. I love his name. You have seen that guy. In half the he stuff is so, he McGill, watched, he is in so many movies and TV is. shows. And he's, uh, to, my, to my recollection, I think he's still with us, too. Because yeah. he was just recently, uh, if I recall correctly, he was in an episode of the, the Neo, whatever the fuck it is, Magnum P.I. Really? Uh, wow. You know, because he was on the original Magnum P.I., too. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, for continuity errors, uh, for the dedication of Provo Privy. The, the Colonel and Sergeant Muldoon are back at Fort Bragg. John Wayne is in his same uniform, uh, and the bleachers are visible in the background. Oops. Oops. Yeah. After the parachute into the mission to snatch the NVA general, and Sergeant Kowalski fights and kills the three VC before being killed himself, Kowalski gets off a call to Kirby just before dying with the radio uh, set next to the right side of, of his head. <coughs> Less than one minute later, Kirby's party catches up yeah. and sees Kowalski dead next to three dead see, but there is no radio. Who uh, stole the damn radio? 
The fourth VC you didn't see. Yeah, the fourth VC you didn't yeah, the see. Yeah, the, the ninja VC stepped in and took the radio. Yeah. Well, they are wearing black pajamas. Yes, there you go. There it is. Uh, so uh, at the beginning of the movie, you see him marching onto the platform. Uh, the orientation team is part of the third special forces group. Muldoon and McGee are wearing third group uh, flashes on their berets. The next time we see them uh, there with Colonel Kirby watching Peterson, they are then wearing fifth group flashes on, on their berets. So there's a continuity problem. They're wearing them correctly, but they're, it's like the continuity is wrong. Oh, there's, there's another one. I don't know if you catch it. When when Kirby and Takei and the other guy are in the observation tower during the attack of the base and the tower falls down, while the tower is falling down, there are only two people in the tower. And when it hits the ground, there are three people again. Reproducing due to gravity? Maybe? I think when it fell, the one guy blended with the sand. <coughs> In the platform itself. <laughs> you just couldn't see him. When Colonel Kirby initially arrives at Da Nang, the two C-130 aircraft carrying his troops are seen taxiing with their tail ramps partially lowered, which would never happen. Yeah, that would never happen. Uh, at around the one hour, 50 minutes, two uh, Monta Montanards show up out of nowhere. They were not on the jump. And there was no radio contact nor previous mention of an indigenous ground force on site. Uh, at the one minute and 30, what? Oh, no, the one hour and 31 minute mark. They wrote it weird. A small group of soldiers are gathered with Colonel Kirby as the, quote, Mike Force, end quote, is landing in helicopters. Sergeant Provo loses his boonie hat at the second chopper in the stick. In the stick touches down. That's that's actually what the the, the landing rails are, are called oh. sticks. Editing um, is bad these days. Editing. Yeah, the cover is the cover being had is seen to fly straight up and is presumably pushed a distance away from the rotor wash. Provo, this is somebody clearly that's like a helicopter pilot or as an MOS with helicopters because he's using all the proper language here. Provo remains without a hat until a close up scene a few seconds later. When he is miraculously wearing again his boonie cap as he leaves with the group. So this is backup yeah, boonies. It's backup boonies. because uh, yeah, you don't want to get caught with outdoors. You um something like that, they probably forgive you pretty quickly, but they tell you go get get your cover. Get your yeah. cover. Go and you it. always have backup cover in your gear. Always. Um and I gotta be honest, I didn't like those boonies. I prefer the boonies we had with the Wider brim that came. Down. Wider brim. Uh, I was I was wore mine uh, tucked up with the with the uh, chin strap holding the sides up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to say it again. Uh, my boonie cap that had all my pins on it stolen by Mac. My best Man, friend. he stole. He steals all the. It's just wrong. See, like, wouldn't you hey, like to recreate that? that? Never see it again. <laughs> wouldn't you like to recreate that though? Get all the pins you had on it. And, 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 and you'll see it every once in a while. I don't have my pins on this hat. I have them on my other hat. Um, I have my 29th Infantry Division pin, um, mm -hmm. which is the yin yang thing. Um, I have also one that has Sixth Army pin on it. But my uh, my booty cap had my uh, combat medic pin, my medical pin, as well as my combat medic pin. It also had my rank pin on it. Which a lot of people are like, yeah, did you rank up? I said, no, I always tell people, um, I went IRR. <laughs> and it's not Robin Williams. Arr. Arr. Um, because uh, we had a kid, my wife and I, we're both active duty at the time. And mm -hmm. I went inactive to raise the kid while she stayed active. Yeah. And so when I processed out, I processed out as an E2. And I never got to, to get up to rank that I wanted. Wow. Yeah. Max stole her at a party. Fucking <laughs> dick. He steals all the... And if he doesn't steal things that I love, he, he fucking breaks them. Like, I had this sword. It was uh, uh, meant to look like it was carved from bone. But it was it was a, a resin. Hand-painted mm -hmm. resin. And it was a Chinese uh, sword. And it was meant to look like bone. Yeah. Uh, or, what do you call it? Ivory. Ivory, yeah. 
And it sat, it was a gift to me from my bass player, one of my bands. And I just, I love that guy. He was such a sweetheart. I always become best friends with the bassists in my bands. It's just drummers and bassists, man. Well, yeah. They're, they're There's a weird relationship. Hip, aren't they? You're the yes. backbone of the music. Yeah. yeah. We're, sure. we're, the, we're the beat, the rhythm and the beat. And last well, um, time I checked, the bass is part of percussion. I mean, it, it just is. It's it's the beat of the It's bass. the rhythm section. Yeah. It's it's the rhythm section, and we're the beat. And we always get along. I always get along with every bassist I've ever been in a band with. And so he bought me that for Christmas, man. And I was like, that's so beautiful. And Mac was, uh, you know, he lived with Zoe and me for a long time. You know, he's just Uncle Mac. And um, I, I, was, I was notorious for zinging him. I just, he'd say something, I'd just zing him. And this one time I said something to him, he had a grapefruit in his hand. <laughs> and I just burned the shit out of him. Bankus was there, my other best friend. And, he, and I heard the zzz of that grapefruit going right past my head. <laughs> he <threw it> right. <laughs> and he hit my fucking, he hit my Millennium Falcon model kit, broke it, and he hit that sword and broke it. And I got really miffed at him. I, and I yelled, this is why I can't have nice things, motherfucker. Because you have shitty aim. <laughs> hey, we have a question from Austin's. Has the channel ever reviewed Scent of a Woman? It is It is in its own way. It's about a veteran. It is. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. I do love that movie. Penny Martin. had a question, too. Hoo-ha. Yeah. Hoo-ha. Yeah. To the uh, Penny was asking uh, what yeah. what movie we're reviewing next week. Yeah, and Anima Anima gave her Answer. response. And we have Crimson Tide. Ooh, and Crimson it would be Tide. nice to see on which commander's camp any of us. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a fun debate. Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Um, I'd like to do a, a parody of that and call it uh, Burnt Umber. Pro uh, tide because they shoot the sub and it destroys the uh, latrine and all that shit floats in the water <laughs> that's that's good. That, was, you. that was too far of a stretch for a job. I was fixing to say come on bro. yes uh, Max <laughs> fucking called and Zoe you did not because he accidentally did it in front of Zoe one day, Oops. Uh, when we were by ourselves, he would call me fuckface. It was just one of those things. And Zoe looked at me and she was like, she knew what that was not a nice word. And she was like, um, why does Uncle Matt call you that? And I, I said, because I made this mistake of looking when he said it. And that's the truth. He said it and I turned and I knew shit. Why did I respond when he said that? I learned in the army when somebody calls you something that you don't want to be called, don't respond. It ends That's very it. quickly. I support this motion from Che. Oh fuck no, Che! <laughs> I will oh, not do that. Yeah. Oh, oh god! <laughs> I, I I like to second that motion. Uh, second that <laughs> motion to do it or not? Do yeah, it? Just, that's a fun movie. Movie. I like down Periscope. Well, it's not a democracy. Fuck you guys. No, yeah, okay. If you want we don't do that, Navy don't, stuff. Here. No, I'm just kidding. Don't worry, John. We will do it in your channel. <laughs> yeah, the, the Marines had the Navy. Army has the Air Force. But then also the Army has the Navy. <laughs> when they had to go. <laughs> so that's, that's how we got to D-Day. <laughs> Every time my brother starts. Anzio. Tells me how great his service is, the, the, the Air Force. I'm like, you do know they were the Army Air Corps when they started, right? You do know that, right? Oh, my God. My girlfriend just shit on me. What? Yeah, she says, yeah, totally accidentally. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> do I turn the book. Um, Because Mac and I cook together a lot. A lot of yeah. people don't know that. We, he, he and I would cook together all the time. And the fuck face started because he was making um, chili. A big pot. Oh, we, we would make a pot that would last a week. And uh, it was an army pot, one of those big mm -hmm. stainless yep. steel ones. It was really nice. Looking for an army. Yep. And make a big pot of that. And um, it that was um, that was the Texas chili. There were no beans in it. And it was really fucking good. 
And um, that was when he, he wanted me to come taste it. And he yelled, and I was in the living room, and he goes, hey, fuck face. <laughs> and I went, what? And he, because I'm the only person in the fucking apartment. So clearly he was talking to me. And, but the minute I said what, I knew I was screwed. And that's what he called me from that point forward. Um, down Periscope. Yeah, I think we could go ahead. Remind me. Remind me. Uh, have you ever let me ask you something you, you're bringing up crimson tide next week have you guys ever done hunt for Red october oh that's, that's coming up too oh uh, that's hunt for Red october is thought. after that um yeah crimson tide first and then because originally today was supposed to be uh hunt for Red october oh but man. anima had to go to vienna uh, <laughs> dude that's one of those drop the remote movies for me at your request yeah. Oh, yeah, adding. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you add it to, if you're able to add that to Wikipedia, fuckface, give right. it a good definition, and then like in a dictionary, see Gary Cassell because I am in Wikipedia. A lot of people don't know that. And uh, here I'll show you. Uh, How does one go. get in Wikipedia? Because I work on it. Uh, no. I can't even edit on there. They won't even let me edit. I have tried to correct that fucking page. Fuck you. No, it was put on by, I believe, IDW. Somebody at IDW in their marketing yeah. put my name in there. But I don't know. I mentioned because it was started because I did a controversial graphic novel about the killing of bin Laden. Okay. Okay. And, um, but then You're I found out I'm already in Wikipedia too for another thing. Because of the work I've done, I'm considered um, a celebrity by my high school. And wow. I, And so I'll show you here in a second. Hold on. Um, yeah. So here we go. I'll pull this up here. Share screen. Present screen. Present screen. Fucking Get stupid. it right, Gary. It is so stupid. That it is, is so stupid. Um, there you go. So here I am, Wikipedia. Gary Excel. The only thing I was ever able to do is I took down the horrendous photo of me they had. I hated the photo. Was it one of these? No, it was a photo <laughs> taken by Mac that was uh, for, for something else. It was scary looking, creepy looking. Oh, yeah, like, you, I put that on there. You should uh, submit your, your picture with the rainbow Disney. And it mentions my uh, work uh, with. Uh, no. Uh, I did the me the I, I, Okay, I'll stop talking. You guys do whatever you're going to do. Okay. No, go ahead. <laughs> Fucking asshole. So it mentions, of course, IDW Publishing, that I worked on the A-Team. I worked on, I was the artist for Iron Sky, the lead artist. Um, uh, you need to do that, They too. mentioned I'm a former medic. I worked for Dale Dye, Warriors, Inc., and Publishing Group. Uh, they mentioned Alan Wake, because uh, that was one over one million sold, Alan Wake. I have that claim to fame. We're working on the Alan Wake video game graphic novel tie-in. And my comic on that one uh, takes place during the game. But it's the other stuff that's going on during the game. And we're telling that story. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Remedy Entertainment. Uh, Dale Dar, Eric Audi. Eric Audi is going to be on this week on um, Dangerous Military Nerds. I've got my buddy Eric is going to be coming on. Uh, a lot of people get mentioned here that I work with. Um, Bayou graphic novel. Uh, combat external East combat veterans with PTSD. I talk about them, but I am not a combat veteran with PTSD. I'm not even a combat veteran. Um, I got in a friendly fire situation. Doesn't count. <laughs> it don't count. It don't count. I still piss myself. Um, I'm sure. But, then you go to my high school, and I didn't know about this until my late friend um, uh, Mike Anderson told me, and I need the one in Virginia. Oh, there it is. And he says, you know, he's, he had a little bit of a, a southern twang when he talked. He goes, hey, Gary, <laughs> you need to go see uh, the James Renault Page, man. You're on there. And I'm like, fuck you, I am. James Monroe hates me. Because I hate them. I hate my high school. And uh, 
get down here. Notable alumni. I'm the one mentioned at the fucking top. Followed immediately by someone I don't know. But then Keller Williams was the guitarist's lead singer of my band. Judge Reinhold? Really? I'm wow. friends with Judge Reinhold. <laughs> How great is that? We all knew him. In fact, uh, I hung out with one of my high school friends last night. And Judge was her brother's. This is so weird. Judge was her brother's babysitter. And her um, her babysitter was W.K. Stratton from Ba Ba Black Sheep. Wow. Because they both of them were in our high school. I didn't wow. know W.K., but I knew his family. Um, but I knew Judge. And um, Beverly Hills getting, Cop and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah, you know, man. These were loving. Uh, I met him. He was in the drama club. And uh, that was my high school years, man. That's my high school right there. That's what it used to look like. But you don't like your high school. Wow. Uh, I have problems with the uh, faculty and the way yeah. it was run. Hey. Uh, they missed. Uh, um, I was one of those kids that fell through the whole, the cracks of the system. Okay. Uh, I had. Uh, I have a high IQ, but I had a learning uh, disability because I don't learn the same way other people do. Yeah. And uh, so I was a terrible student in school mm. on certain things. If you engaged with me. I did really well. The minute I engaged, straight A student. And anybody uh, can tell you're not you're not stupid. So yeah. Well, I thought I was. That's I a failure of teaching, right there. Yeah. Well, it's also a failure on my dad's part, because uh, I thought it was stupid. I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought I was dumb. Uh, the reason I failed is because I was dumb. A lot and of the ADD kids have problems in school because they're the bored. Minute, the minute I started yeah. college, I you know because I I quit high school and I took my GED. I didn't know that I tested the highest on my GED score than anybody. I had the highest mm -hmm. score. And I learned that through Jim Woodward's mom, Leslie, because she worked at school. I found this out uh, because she sent all my school records. And they sent it to, I was terrified <coughs> when I started nursing, going to, to school to be a nurse. And um, before I joined the army. And um, fuck, man. Mrs. Glidden, uh, she was the director of nursing for the school. She, she got my school records, and I was, I was like, I was having an anxiety attack. I was terrified, and I kept going, "Please don't judge me off my school records. I will be a good student. I swear to God, I will." And yeah. she called me in, and so I, I drove all the way to the campus, went in to meet her, and she says, um, "I don't know what you're so nervous about." She goes, "You were in the top two percentile in all your testing," and I'm wow. like. Did you get my school records? They sent the wrong records. She goes, these are yours. She held them up and I'm, that's that's my name. That's my social security number. Huh? What? Wow. And I was, I was flummoxed. Mm -hmm. I'd never known this. Nobody ever told me that I had a high IQ and that I tested in the top 2% of yeah, the entire it's, school. It, yeah, it's, it's a shame, man. It's a shame. And I was a terrible student in high school. I, cause I did not learn the way other people learn. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered in college, I had to do the opposite of what they made me do in school, pay attention. I couldn't pay attention. The minute I start focusing, I, my focus doesn't stick. It's when I'm relaxed. I learn what I refer to it as passive learning. And uh, I doodle a lot. Yeah. And my brain relaxes when I'm doodling. And you're taking everything in there, I'm right? looking out a Peripherally window. Peripherally and everything. And yeah. teachers used to get mad at me in high school. Well, public school. It was middle school, too. Get mad at me. Like, Mrs. Uh, uh, Casserly. I used to make fun of her. I fucking hated her. She, she, um, she, what did I just say, Mr. Cassell? And I'd repeat to her what she said. Because I didn't look like I was paying attention, but I heard everything mm -hmm. she said. Yeah. And she thought I was, like, she just treated me like I was always messing with her. No, this is how I learned. And apparently, on my own, I figured that out, that if I relax, I'm fine. Know thyself. Yeah. The reason so, why I asked about it is because uh, I'm in the middle of, uh, we just had our second meeting of the uh, committee for our 40th anniversary here at Parkway High School, the one I went to. Graduated in 83. Is that where you had your first gay experience? No, sir. <laughs> it was that, was in, that, that would have been in middle school. <laughs> middle and, uh, school. Okay. It was a uh, it was a priest, and I don't want to talk about it. But. Yeah, well, you know, um, I used to tell people, um, you're not officially gay until you do it twice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank God, I don't qualify there. Yeah. <laughs> 
But uh, look, guys, uh, great show. I had fun. It was fun. I wish Don had been yeah. here. Um, but uh, I wish him a speedy recovery, man. Especially but, Vicky. Uh, I hate that they're sick. Prayers are with you, sir. <clears throat> Absolutely. And um, Bill, uh, thank you so much for producing the show today. I want to thank everybody for uh, being here in the chat. Let's get to the private chat now. Go Andy Morrow, Penny, Dragon Roos, Socks, Bulletins, Monkey Jeepers. Thank you. Come again. Cavity, Cavatino, Cavaroom, and Che. Man, that is a mouthful right there. I'm sure he's, every girl said that to him, too. Um, Kingsport Cal was here but didn't stay for the show. Scribe Light, O Stains, that's John. Alex Moore, Read by Nature, Shinatsky, Patrick Jordan, the Chief, Darius Mucha. Don't forget to watch his show tomorrow. Um, they're doing heat. And oh, of course, uh, I hate v, that I'm at work during that show. V Psycho, oh, and of course, Darius Munchausen. Thank Bill, you all. Thank you, Darius, for the uh, super chat, super sticker. Bill, you're being called to the front by the public. Yeah, Bill's here. Bill's always here. Hey, there's Bill. What's happening? What's crappening? <laughs> ah, I'm done with the show. You can come in now. Yeah, yeah. Bill is here. Um, happy Monday. I hope everybody has a good week this week. Don't forget to stay around for tomorrow. We got uh, the Chiefs. He's doing Heat, and he's going to be talking about some of the major crimes that tie into that movie. Yeah, uh, it's loosely directly. based on a true story. Yeah. Well, it's it's not even really loosely. The The story is actually in there. It's just simply they add a bunch of stuff to it and yep. make it a, di a different era. But the fact is, is point for point, it is the story, mm -hmm. including if you pay attention, Al Pacino's character's cocaine addiction, because the mm -hmm. real cop had a cocaine mm -hmm. problem. No scan. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, uh, I, we will be back next Monday with Crimson Tide, followed by Hunt for October the next week. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Animal will be back with us. Thank God. I miss her already. Um and uh, past that, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. See you later. Those sons of bitches. Ma, I'm doing a show. Okay.